Um, our next speaker is Dr. Pam Marone, uh, currently CEO and founder of Marone Bio Innovations, a company she started in 2006 to discover and develop effective and environmentally responsible natural products that, for pest management in agriculture and water. She has degrees from Cornell University and North Carolina State University, a wealth of experience and many awards that she has been given in a distinguished career in this field. Dr. Marone. Good morning. Yesterday you heard the speaker from the European Crop Protection Association talk about the thinning pipelines on the agrochemical side. And you can see, I just have put the, the data in a different way, showing you um, that uh, the number of new leads um, has not yielded that many new launches of new chemical products. And that's where we see biopesticides coming in to uh, new active ingredients coming in to fill the gap. And of course the increasing cost um, and to find a new chemical pesticide. And Bill already went through all the benefits of biopesticides. I'm not going to go through them again. Just show you some market statistics from BCC research showing you that uh, it's estimated around between 1.3 and 1.8 billion now is the, the size of the biopesticide market, expecting to grow, well exceed the chemical pesticide growth and grow somewhere between 10 and 15 percent by the number of studies that have been about, about the growth. And as Bill said, most biopesticides are used in conventional farming, although many of them are approved for organic but uh, they're used largely integrated programs and conventional. And he already told you what biopesticides are, I won't belabor that. But what you're seeing is going from a, a chemically intensive, formerly chemically intensive pest management programs into one where the sustainable segment where you're using biologicals and chemicals together. When I first started out, most biopesticides were pigeonholed into organic production. And no one would think that you could integrate uh, biologicals in with chemical pesticides. That has completely changed, of course. So now I'm going to talk about uh, some innovations from our company, because where I think uh, the future is going is truly depending on innovation. And our company is all about innovation. So we discovered, develop, and market effective and environmentally friendly natural products for pest management in ag and water markets. And so just a little bit overview of the company. We have approximately 100 employees, and we're selling three products. Uh, an invasive muscle product, which controls zebra and quagga mussels, which you do have here. And uh, we are working and done some successful field trials in Ireland on that product, but that's a non-ag product. And then we're selling a biofungicide regalia and grain devo and have more, many more in the pipeline. So we find our products from uh, any, anywhere, actually. We have our own discovery, but we also in-license technology from other people. And that's been a successful strategy to get uh, products quickly as well as that while our own R&D is working and getting the products going. So we start with, say, just like you would a natural product discovery program for uh, pharmaceuticals and looking to the rainforest for new products, penicillin comes from a mold. Same concept, we're looking for exploiting the natural world, looking for areas of bio, high, high biodiversity and then isolating those microorganisms that live there. Testing them against insects, nematodes, plant pathogens, weeds, and we actually also have an algicide screen because we are looking, we think there's a real opportunity for novel natural products in water markets and there are only toxic chemicals used for controlling algae. And then we have a natural product chemistry group that then characterizes the compounds produced by the microbes or in some cases plant extracts so that we ensure that we eliminate strains um, that are producing harmful com compounds and then in every fermentation batch we can detect those compounds and every batch is consistent because then you know what level of compounds are required for best efficacy. Then, of course, the next step would be to scale them up into uh, fermentation, and we have a number of fermentate fermenters in our lab in Davis, California, and then we've just purchased a manufacturing site in uh, Bangor, Michigan, where we're retrofitting and putting fermentation tanks on there. And then, of course, formulation is one of the most, it is probably one of the most important uh, things in getting a biopesticide to work. You can take a ho-hum active ingredient and turn it into a great biopesticide through formulation. So from our, our own um, internal discovery, we screened approximately 17,000 microorganisms. Most of them are our own isolations, which is a small fr fraction from outside collections. And the taxonomies are here. But most of the products that we have found so far for commercial development come from the bacterial. And we, did, we found a number of new species, novel species, and strains based on their um, DNA sequences. 
So we can get a product to market very quickly. It costs obviously a lot much, much less money than a chemical pesticide. So for us, we can get a product to market for four to five million. Just for, that's for U.S. development. Then it's another five to ten million for global development. And we go through various stages, um, as you see here, from the initial discovery through toxicology and de defining the natural products chemi chemistry, formulation and process optimization, um, then through um, scale up and tar a targeted launch. We do a targeted launch with growers that we know and develops the, helps, helps us develop the product early and then that feeds back into R&D on what they like and don't like about the product. Uh, we have a, developed a, quite a large pipeline of products and I'm just going to talk about a few of those today and showing you how you can integrate biopesticides in with chemical programs. So, um, you know, we, we think we're developing the next generation of biological pesticides. As I mentioned, um, through innovation, we can elevate biologicals to be on par with chemicals. And so in our pipeline, we believe we have a product that works as well as the best chemicals in the biofungicide regalia, as consistent as chemicals, and then also when combined with chemicals, can get better results than chemicals alone. We have a broad spectrum microbial insecticide, Grandiva, with a very unique mode of action. We have discovered from our screen a contact microbial insecticide that has very potent uh, compounds produced by microbes. We have discovered, which I talked about yesterday, a very interesting uh, new herbicide produced by a new species of bacteria that produces systemic compounds that move in the xylem and the plant. And then we've discovered uh, two new classes of broad spectrum nemat nematicidal chemistry from microorganisms that are easily synthesized and could be used as synthetic leads. And uh, then uh, I already mentioned Zequinox. So the idea here is that for our company, we start out with the high value horticultural specialty crops, enter those markets, but then you can leverage the biopesticide products into many other markets once you know, we get a base into um, horticultural crops. And a lot of companies are, do that, most biopesticide companies do that, because the best fit for biopesticides has traditionally been in markets where, as Bill already said, resistance management, residue management, et cetera. And then we're going to see a, a lot more leveraging into these additional markets, and Bayer Crop Science has, has done that with Poncho Votivo, a combination of a chemical and biological on the seed, and you're going to see a lot more of that. Then you can leverage them into other areas. So as I mentioned, you can use them alone or <clears throat> for organic, or you can use them with chemicals in programs as, as biopesticides as they are. Or like Pancha Votivo or, you can, or our own products, we can mix them with chemicals and get better performance with less chemical load and, to, and other advantages of premixes. So you're going to see a lot more premixes. When we do our natural product screening, we discover novel molecules that can be then used as a basis for new synthetic active ingredients, and our company has discovered a number, number of those. And then um, you can also mine the collection for engineering into plants once you find proteins. So a nice way to leverage uh, biopesticides into other areas. So just briefly talk about how you would um, integrate some of these things into pest management programs, regalia and extractive giant knotweed, which is an induced systemic resistance product. And here you have um, an example of soybeans in 2009, and we have data from 10, 11, and 12 showing you that when you apply regalia alone and the chemical alone, but the combination out yields either the chemical or the regalia alone. So here's an example of where you can get the synergistic activity. Um, here's an example of where for resistance management, so in California, in leafy greens, downy mildew is a real problem on that fo foggy coast. And you have an amazing cocktail of chemicals that are used to manage downy mildew, difficult to control. So here's an example of where you can put in regalia, get a complex mode of action, get resistance management, and improve your pest management, your disease management. Um, then here's an example where I've been told by, by the, the growers and pest control advisors in California that biopesticides could never go up against the big guns like Luna and other um, uh, chemicals. And here's an example of where you can integrate them in and indeed you can, um, instead of just being pigeonholed for organic like the uh, biopesticides have been in the intensive powdery mildew in California market, you can see where you can have the advantage where they're integrated in with the big gun chemicals as well. 
Um, then you, here's an example of where you can use a biological to manage the residues. Um, Vanguard has a pre-harvest interval of seven days where you have zero days for, and we do indeed have some growers that have been waiting to ship from Europe, from the US, and they were worried about the residues and so they could use Regalia in that last spray or integrated with, uh, with Vanguard in a program. So to wrap up, um, another plug for Biopesticide Industry Alliance that Bill talked about. We've got a great website with a lot of content on it and a lot of white papers about how to use biopesticides. Um, there's another one from Meister Media called The Rise of Biopesticides.com, and it has a lot of good case studies and success stories about biopesticides. And then from our own website, you can have, if you want a little primer or primer, however you say it, on biopesticides, there's a, a course online you can take. So just to wrap up, so where's the future? Um, formulation is so critical. We don't have enough inert ingredients to use. So finding new inerts and then making better formulations, extending the life, residual life, and improving consistency, very critical. Um, you're, again, seeing a lot, you're going to see more premixes, and you're going to see premixes of multiple biopesticide active ingredients as well as with chemicals. There's a critical need in the market, and from the surveys that Biopesticide Industry Alliance and others have done, that customers don't always know how to use these products, so a lot more education and training is needed. Support from the university and public institutions in how to integrate. Often are, these products, are, biopesticides, are tested standalone against cocktails of chemicals. That's not, that makes no sense. They should be integrated now. And then a lot more on-farm demonstrations of how you would do that integration. So thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Moran, and thank you to both our speakers so far for being uh, in, in the face of an enormous amount of giving us an enormous amount of information, getting there right on time. So thank you very much indeed.